everyone and welcome to the start of making the sack back dress. Here I'm just starting on cutting my lining pieces. I'm using a uh, linen in white and you'll see here I've got the front section on the left and you'll see here that I've got a grain line marked. So when you put this on, you align this on with the grain of the fabric so it will look in this position when you pin it on to cut out. And then the back piece is just cut on the straight. So we're only dealing with two sections for this piece. Just going back to this front piece here, now you will see when you actually put this the right way up to how it will be on you, which is like so, you will now see that the grain line is going off in a bias direction. Next you have to join all your pieces together, down the centre back and the sides. I've also ironed the seam flaps inwards each side and I've opened out the middle flaps and ironed those down flat. The next stage you want to turn the bottom hem inwards one and a half centimetres. And you want to make sure that it's exactly one and a half centimetres all the way around. Making sure that you keep your middle seam flaps flat and these are bending inwards. Now you've cut it on the bias, you'll find this easier to turn. If you'd cut this on the straight it would be really really hard to turn. and You might have to actually cut the inside to allow it to bend. When you get to the ends here, just run them off. Don't cut these. So now it should like look nice and neat on the outside. Okay, now take your outer fabric, which will be the decorative stuff you will see. Um, this is a nice floral cotton. I will post it on my website where you can buy it from, if the lady still has any. And I haven't used up her entire supply. <laughs> um, right, we've got two fronts here either side. And you can see here we've just pinned it. We've left a two centimetre wide allowance going all the way up to the top of your strap. So that's where we are at this stage. Next you need to sew down that piece of outer fabric to your liner. Remember to put, you've got your inside here facing up. Remember to put your good side of your fabric facing down. Next you want to turn it the right way out, you can see here you've just got your liner underneath and you just want to give it a press with the iron. We're now starting to make the actual sack that goes onto the back of the dress, that's with all the pleats. This is our mock-up, uh, on me the length was 1 meter 50 because uh, I've got quite a bit of train on mine uh, you might want yours shorter or you might want it even longer but this is the stage to get all your measurements right um, we have actually put on the website on the written tutorial how to get all your measurements so it is all done there for you to save us repeating this on the video 
um, start of cutting my pattern pieces. This one is cut to one metre fifty, just there we can see it's been cut. Uh, I've decided to make it so that the pattern is continuous, so we're going to show you how to do that. You only need to take note of this if you want to have a repeating pattern. Right, we're now going to show you how to line up your pattern. This has a repeat pattern of 12 centimetres and we would like these roses to match up with these roses. If you just put it together like this at the top, then your pattern will be out. So I'm going to show you how to line up your roses. This is our next piece that we're going to cut. And you can see there's a prominent rose here. And this matches this one here. So we'd like those to be at the same level. So pull this fabric up until you can match up your pattern. Then you'll be cutting across here to cut off the excess. And then you can do your measurement again of one, like we did, of one metre fifty. OK, next you want to join those two pieces together. Uh, I've done a centimetre and a half seam allowance. And then you just need to give your seam flaps a good press of the iron and open those out. Right, this is the top of our fabric. And we're now going to do our measuring for our pleats. I'm going to use pins for this. And it is fortunate that we have actually have a pattern, so if I lose my way, I should be able to find out myself, find myself very quickly. Right, from the centre seam, we're going to measure five inches with a marker or a pin. And five inches is 12.5 centimetres. Then come down away and then mark again. You can mark it again if you like, but I think I'll just stick at the two marks. That's our first mark. Now from the pin, you have to decide uh, how big you want your small pleat to be. Because some people like small pleats, some people like wider pleats. And the one that we're going to go for is three quarters of an inch which in English is two centimetres. So I'm going to put my markers in at three quarters of an inch. And the same down here. And if you have more markers, of course, you're going to measure it. The next one is another five inches from the very last pin that you put in. pin like so yep now the next pleat that you make is the pleat that's going to be right on top some people would like to have a narrow pleat at the top uh, whereas some people might prefer a wider pleat Tracy has decided that she will have a pleat that is two and a half inches wide, so that is 6.5 centimetres. So I'll just put my next mark on that. And the next mark we're going to do is five and a half inches, which is 14 centimetres. So from the last pin that you put in, five and a half inches. Okay, remember the three-quarter pleat that we put in here? 
we're going to repeat that as our next step so from that click that pin we're going to put exactly the same mark again like so the next one is quite a big pleat and it will be seven inches which is 18 centimeters Okay, so from our uh, last mark, okay. your last pleat will be three and a half inches, which is nine centimeters. Okay, that is all your measuring done. We're going to do that on the other side now. Let's turn our pleats. The very first pins that we put in, you're going to pinch those up like so. Then you're going to move the whole pleat over to your centre seam. Line it up. And then we're just going to pin that in place. Make sure it lines up there. And then we'll put an extra pin in down here. There you go, that's our first pleat done. These are our pins that we're going to make for the small pleat. pleat. We'll ignore those for now because we're going to the very next one, which is here. We're going to pick up those pins and then move the pleat to this set of pins. And line those up. Now we're moving along to the next set of pleats. This, this is for your outward pleat. As I said before, this is two and a half inches we're going to make it. Now we're going to start pleating in the opposite direction. So pinch where your pins are. And then we're going to come out to the next set of pins that you've put in. So that's all going underneath. And this is going to line up, excuse me, a bit fiddly. This is going to line up your very first set of pins, which is there and there. I'll just pin that down in place. So that is our top pleat. The next set of pins, we're at the three quarter of an inch mark. We're going to move those pins to the next ones over here. So pinch those pins and pull your material over a bit fiddly. to the next set of pins, which is there. Just pin that down. Like so. 
Now the idea of this very last pleat that you're going to do is that it's called a hidden pleat, which means you're not going to see it, it will all be at the back. So just bear with me for a minute. You're going to take all your pleating that you've done so far and you're going to go over that pleat like that so it is actually hidden and you don't see it easier said than done sorry like so so it's completely hidden now at the back of your work there's the last pleat there and you won't see that so we just put some pins in just to hold that in place Sorry about my hands getting in the way, but this is a very difficult manoeuvre to do without having your hands in the way. Now if you look down here, I can just see the pleat before, which I don't want to see at all. So I'm just going to take out a pin here and push that pleat further under. So I'll just take my pins out temporarily. And then I'm going to move that pleat that we've just done right out the way so I can't see it anymore like so I'm going to put my pin back in so you can't see that hidden pleat at all on the top okay. and this is just giving you an idea of what the back looks like Make sure all your pleats are flat, all, they're pointing in the, all, all direction, and that your fabric is flat at the top. There you go. Going back to our bodice back pattern, the seam at the back was about a centimetre that we put in. That is for reference. I'm going to line up with the back seam now with my pattern of that seam allowance so that is my back pattern but what I'm going to do now is to mark with a pen or a marker this pattern onto my fabric I'm going to come out just a little way here like so making sure that it's straight from top to bottom I'm now going to follow this pattern down going a little bit wider down my pattern piece okay. the reason why I'm going a little bit wider is because I want to make sure I've got enough fabric in I don't want to be, I'd rather have too much fabric left over than not enough so I'm just going to allow for a little bit of excess on that pattern now when you come down here we're going to stop um, before we get to the bottom the first one and a half centimeters is your turn up seam so I'm going to go up four centimeters and I'm going to stop at that point I just put my pattern back on there and I'm going to stop at that point I'm not going to go any further now that we have the outline of our bodice piece we can cut that out Cut 
down as far as that mark and no further, like so. Now we need to cut across this way and we can get rid of all this fabric over here. So the best way to do that is to fold this over and make sure that it meets up with this edge and you will know by doing that that you will have a perfect straight edge here that we are going to cut and this can come up That is one half of your sack back. All you have to do now is to repeat the process for the other side. And after all the pleating, if you can, as you can see, I've put on my original bodice back here, and it should fit in the space available, which it does. Okay, next you place your liner with the good side, the outside facing down and then you place your sack back on top making sure it more or less matches up around the armholes and the top as close as you can get it and put some pins in. Next we want to start catching the, some pleats in place, so I'm just starting off here and I've come up a little bit before the pleat and then I'm just going back down. Now because I'm just starting this, I'm doing it about four times so it's nice and strong and they're just little tiny stitches just going down on the edge And I'm going to go down a little bit and on the edge of the other pleat. I've now hand tapped down all my pleats. I only tapped down about five inches from the top. Some other ones you'll see have actually tapped their pleats going across this way. But I wanted to try this way because I thought it would look a little bit nicer. Okay, just laid it out on the table here. And you can see here I've got the liner on the inside seam and you just press that open on the strap there. Okay, I'm going to cut now I'm going to cut a diagonal line into the fabric. About two centimeters. We are now going to come towards this edge of the fabric and we're going to turn over the edge about two centimetres in and that's going to happen all the way down to the bottom oh no, it's not. Oh no, okay. sorry correction you don't do that all the way to the bottom silly Tracy <laughs> so this is just as long as the pocket slit 
So now I'll turn the whole thing upside down so I can do my plates. That's what I'll just get the set up. Okay, we've now turned it all upside down. You can just see here where we cut and this is the edge. We are now going to take that fabric and fold it like so. We're going to start pleating. We're going to do one and a half inch pleats. And just pin in place now when I come to do this last pleat this is the side that has had the turnover I want this to meet the edge exactly just like that and just pin those together like so and that's your pleats next we want to just run a running stitch across the pleats to hold them all in place Okay, now we're going to connect our back fabric to our bodice. Okay, so at the top of the armhole, you can see where the seam is for the bodice. We want this pointing backwards. And now the top fabric needs to overlap that seam by a centimetre and a half. So you want it to finish here. So we'll just fold that over feel the seam underneath the fabric. Just pin that in place and follow it down. And then one more should do it. So, then what you will be doing is putting a running stitch down there. You don't have to go all the way up to that one and a half centimetres. You can go just, just this side of it. So you're going to run a running stitch down here. And when you get to the bottom, you're just going to attach uh, all your pleating to your bodice. So you can either use a whip stitch or... A running stitch again as long as it's attached to your bodice. Okay I have now tacked this edge down to the liner. Okay the last job to do is to pin back your fabric onto your bodice down the back seam. So what I'm going to be doing is putting my hand and flattening out that fabric and if you go far enough, you will actually feel the very first pleat right in there. So I'm going to put a pin in as far as I can. Okay. Just a couple more pins in there just to hold it. to do because you're doing it all by feel but as long as you've pulled the fabric back tight and you can just about see my pins in there holding it flat I'm not going to be too fussy about where they actually go I just like it to be flat in there and I'm going to do the other side turning it over you can now see what I've been doing and you can just see where the pins have come through at the back of the bodice. Now some people would probably sew the bodice 
to the fabric at this stage uh, but I'm just going to leave it pinned I'm not going to sew it just yet because the next time we do a fitting I want to make sure that the fabric on the front is in the right place and it's tight enough so for my own satisfaction I'm not going to sew it just yet